Aaron Rodgers said that Bronson Kafusi is the happiest person I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. We're here at Beyond the Game, and I am so grateful to have Bronson Kafusi. Now, I remember being a fan up in the stadium and having played defensive end in high school, having a, an appreciation for what guys like him do at very high levels in the sport. It was so fun to be a, a fan of his then and now to be an acquaintance and fan of his today. Thanks for being here, Bronson. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. This is cool. I mean, you've got, as we visited before, it's obvious that you have a lot of experiences. So, <laughs> you know, let's jump into it. Yeah. In fact, it's funny. Well, I'm going to jump right into, maybe we shouldn't do this at the at the start. Yeah. But we had Eric Mika here weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, I love Eric. Yeah, I do too. What a good kid. Yeah. You know? And he told one of, one of my most enjoyable stories was... When he told, and he told a story on you. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are at Gonzaga, right? Uh -huh. And uh, and Kelly Olin, Olinick? Is how, is oh. It? Olinick. Okay. Huh? Yeah. I should Olenic. pronounce his name yeah. properly. But I guess he dunked the ball and flexed or something. And you were sitting there, maybe next to Eric or something. And so you asked the coach to go in. Do you remember that? <laughs> you know what? It what you're talking about is uh, we were playing. It was at BYU, and he had he had a reverse dunk. Oh, and he he dunked it, and then pointed at the bench. Exactly. And I'm sitting on the bench, <laughs> and I think he's pointing at me. Yeah. So I was like, Oh, I'm gonna go in there, I and like, it, coach. yeah, I want to get in there. And eventually, I mean, yeah, he put me in, and and you know, I just really just wanted him to know, like, hey. You just don't don't do that here, like you know. You know like, <laughs> um, I just because you know, it's just coming from a football mindset where it's like, yes, you know, you, you play with a lot of emotion in football, of like, course. and and then you use it to fuel you. And so when I joined on, I joined the basketball team, and when he did that, I was I was like, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to show him that like I'm not I'm not afraid, you know, because because exactly. it's a level of respect. Like you want That's them right. to respect That's you. That's right. And so. That's right. Yeah, he, he came down the middle and went up for a shot. And I just kind of like, yeah, I just pretty much went straight through him. Um, and he ended up falling. And I kind of like stood over them. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was it was just, you know, it's kind of like, but it's just part of the game, you know. It's part of sure. like, it's part of the, you know, the messaging and, and trying to, you know, it's like, no, we don't do that here. Like, you know. Well, it's almost like. You know, when he turns around and points at you guys and like challenges you, that, that's my thought. I mean, that's the, what I thought. Yeah, the, the football mentality is okay. I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna do it fairly. Yeah, but you're gonna feel it. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna. No, I'm here. So I'm here. <laughs> I apologize for bringing that up first thing, but it just warmed that's my That's hilarious. Heart. Well, you might remember. I mean, did you follow the BYU football team. Yeah. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. And remember when we went to Coastal Carolina? Yes. You know, and yes. at the end of the first half, there was a weird play. Yes. You know? Yes. I just don't, I, I never understood. Like, in my old days, you know, the Matt Mendenhalls of the world would have run out on the field and said, no, you're not going to throw my quarterback around like a, a rag doll. Yeah. But maybe I misunderstand. I don't know. What What do you think? Did you see that play? Yeah. No, I saw it. I saw it. It was, I think... Did, did we throw an interception? Yeah. Was it interception? Threw, yep. Yep. And then the the defensive players went and they went Two after guys the quarterback. Went after the quarterback? Yeah. Yeah. What's oh man. His name? We've heard of him before. I can't remember. What's oh, the quarterback? It was no yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It, no, yeah. It was Zach. It was Zach. It was definitely Zach. Yeah, because I remember and I saw my cousin Isaiah run out there. Okay. He was the first one. Okay, good. And I saw him run out there. And yeah, it's but it's like, you know. It's funny because, like in football, 
you always like you just never back down like that's the mentality like you You're just right. never if, if back you do, down yeah. yeah if you do they just beat you yeah and and it's just you're just not made and cut out for the sport, honestly. So it's you have to be able to just you just keep going and you keep going. And you have to, or else people will just keep coming at you all day. And so that's why you know I was I was glad I you know it was good to see Isaiah run out there. I remember, and you know immediately because he was the first player there. Um, but I mean, defensive players, I mean you get in that mindset and they went after you. They go after the quarterbacks. They yeah, always they, do. Like they t- watch, watch all the interception. Oh, oh, what oh, happens? That's right. That's yeah, right. the defensive players they'll go, <laughs> and you know it's funny. Like because as a defensive player, it's like you're sitting there watching, and you're just hoping your quarterback just goes and hides. You're like, go hide, go like, run off the run field. off the field, just go down. Because like we can't afford you getting hurt, you know, on an interception. Like just let it, let that, it go. Like yeah. let it go. Yeah. Like you know, and unless you can make the play, but if you're far away from the play, which I'm pretty sure he was far, he was far, away. he was far away. So yeah. it's like, yeah, as a defensive player watching that happens, your quarterback, you're like, why are they doing that? You know, but like, yeah, so you're like, okay, I better do something about this. <laughs> but Bronson, I I really do have a sincere respect for the way you play football and the way you played basketball. But my heavens, um, I saw you so many times take on heavy blocks, you know, on on counters or reverses or or sp- speed spread outs, you know. And frequently you were the guy that didn't have the leverage because you maybe took on a pulling guard or a fullback that was trying to, you know, um not clip you but but get cut you, outside. yeah, cut you. And yet you'd still I mean, with hustle and determination get out and get that fast running back you know before he he turned the corner yeah man yeah those are some fun plays just because if you know how to play it right yeah. uh there's certain angles that you can take and certain things that you can do to where uh you know you're gonna be able to catch up to him like True. yeah you just be- know that's right because when this guy's back there and you're right here. You know he has to turn the corner. Yeah. So the smart defensive player knows the angle to take where I can intercept you. Yeah. And you have to run 12 steps, and I only have to run nine. Yeah. And, that, and you still have to be really quick to do that. Yeah, yeah. You have to. It just comes down to having no wasted movement. So if I'm coming out, I know if, if my teammate is doing a good job of taking on that polar correctly, then – the running back has to take like half a step. And in, in that half a step, I've closed on him. You know, if, if I'm doing my job. Right? And I saw you do that. <laughs> and, and it pleased my heart when you did. <laughs> Me so too. Cool. So cool. Me too. We met this, and I think you were there at the uh, 100 Years of Football. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was cool. So another defensive end, I met Tyler Batty. Yes. Yeah, and that's a young guy that looks like he has a pretty good motor. Yes, he, yeah, he plays with... <clears throat> Yeah, or the high motor. It's funny because when I was at BYU, I would coach the camps and I'd coach the basketball camp. And, and Batty was always on my team. Really? Since he was like a fifth grade or something. So I've known him for a long time. So what um, high school did he go to? Payson. Really? Yeah, he went okay. to Payson. So okay. it's, it's, it's been really fun like watching him, you know, throughout all these years and being there. And yeah, I love the way he plays with his motor. I mean, yeah. you can make up a lot of ground and make a lot of plays just self hustle just like alone you know taking on that block keeping your balance and then popping yeah getting out there yeah and staying staying alive that's the number one rule stay alive but then <laughs> i'm how proud can i be of you because then you converted to maybe a more natural position what are you six five or six six yeah i'm a, i'm close to six seven actually it's kind of crazy whoa <laughs> yeah okay then i'm like six six and yeah i believe that yeah there's a right underneath six seven you're a big guy but yeah they was it just in the NFL that they were making you a tight end? Yeah, yeah. Well, what happened was, you know, some of the tight ends got hurt when I was with the Jets, and I ended up going in right and and doing it. I had to, right? We had to practice and do things, and so yeah, I ended up yeah converting over, doing both, and then the next year, I I went to Green Bay and did only tight end, and so it's kind of funny, full circle, just because I was offered as a tight end to BYU. Really? Yeah, I was offered as a defensive end. So, but but yeah, you told me earlier that um, Tim Pugh did not run yeah. for the tight end. We didn't run it. Yeah. So all my film from Friday nights, I was playing DN. Like if I wanted to play, did you play an offensive position? I, I was the tight end, but I never went in. 
Really? Yeah, I never went in because we didn't use them. They never used a tight end. So, but I go to all the camps. Yeah, as a tight end. So they knew you. So they knew me. And when you're a basketball player, it's assumed you know you have yeah. some hands. You know how to catch a ball. Yeah, yeah. So I go to all the camps and you know all the Nike camps, Under Armour camps. Yeah. You know I play tight end, and so a lot of my offers that I had, you know, were tight end. Okay. A lot of people didn't know that, but. But my heavens, six seven. Yeah. What 240, 250? Yeah, I, I probably would have been that, yeah, about that t- weight. Tight end, you didn't have. Yeah, DN, I was a little bigger. You I'm more like 270, 280. Right, like, right. Yeah. And you still had that good speed. Um, but I can't imagine. I loved a tight end going up against a, a strong safety. Oh, yeah. Know, because if you had a little bit of speed and a little bit of size. Yeah. You know, it was like. Look gonna, him right off. Look him right. Yeah, it's like, I know that if I'm up against the point guard, I'm going to get the rebound. Yeah. And I know if I'm the tight end going against this guy, I'm going to get the pass. No, yeah, I'll body him up. We'll be e- good. Exactly. I, All it is is boxing him out. Yeah, it was, you know what I mean? yeah, it was pretty funny. Like the alumni game, the first alumni game. Did you play it? I went in and I went in for two plays and I knew I was like, because this is when I had transitioned to tight end, right? And I went in uh, in the red zone. I had two plays, had two touchdowns. <laughs> and that was it. I was out. Yeah, yeah. I had like a fade. I'm done. And then, then Ty Dever threw me like a back line pass. And I was like, I'm good. Like, that's it. <laughs> you know, and and I don't know, back in those days, and it's still in this day. I, in fact, when we played in the Holiday Bowl, there was one year when the, um, when the San Diego Chargers were playing against the Denver Broncos. Mm-hmm. We were playing Saturday night. And then the following Monday was the NFL game between. And so all week long, we were in the locker room Mm -hmm. in San San Diego's locker room. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was playing linebacker that year. There was an all-pro weak side linebacker called Woodrow, named Woodrow Lowe. He was listed at 6'2", 230 or something. Mm -hmm. And, And sometimes they were coming in right after us. Yeah. And so he's an NFL dude, you know. Yeah. I I'm saying, wow, this is cool. Yeah. And I was in his his locker. Oh, okay. So he came up once as I'm just leaving, you know, and I stood up and the guy might have been six foot. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, so the NFL's the same as NCAA in high school. Yeah. You know, they were exaggerating, but he was great. You know, I'm not yeah. taking anything from his capacities. Yeah. So I can't imagine some of those DBs. Strong yeah. safeties are only going to be six foot, six one. I mean, yeah. It, frequently, you get a six four guy that can really run and cover. Yeah, yeah. But I can't imagine you six foot seven coming in on a guy like that. That would be uh, that. I'd love to be fun. an offensive coordinator and get you the ball. Yeah, that would be fun. I loved it. Yeah, I did all that, all the seven on seven stuff. That's what got me into it. Honestly, was playing like the seven on seven tournaments. Like, but they well, they only used to do them at the different team camps so okay now they have it's oh. a whole thing it's like AAU oh. basketball now so but i was like yeah that's probably where i would probably be you know having a good time during those sure. tournaments yeah well how tell us how your nfl career ended because you played with the packers in fact i wanted to share one thing that i heard on another podcast with you yeah that aaron Rodgers said that bronson kafusi is the happiest person i've ever met <laughs> isn't that cool uh, yeah that's cool yeah that's oh man yeah it's funny like cause i went there i was in green bay in 21 and i was doing full tight end at that point and so yeah it was just so fun to get to know Aaron and get to know he seems like a friendly good guy oh yeah he's a great guy yeah, yeah i love that guy and he's and he makes it so fun like, cause, you know, I was a defensive player. I played against Aaron, and then being able to, you know, go and play tight end, you know, it was awesome. But he makes it – I've never had so much fun in just meetings just because he makes it fun. He makes it light. But at the same time, you know, we are going to get everything done that we need to. And there's a high level and high yep, expectation. Dude. And, yeah, but at the same – you know, it's a really unique balance that he's able to, you know, create in the locker room. And so, yeah, it was. It's obvious it was he, he has a leadership <clears throat> capacity that it's one of the top, and yeah. that's what makes him such a great quarterback. Or one yeah. of the things that makes him. Yeah, no, it's very true. Wow. Yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, you've been in those locker rooms free. I mean, recently. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, just yeah, not too far, not too long ago. What took you out of the NFL? 
You know, I was, I was the the next year I was taking calls, and I, you know, I told my I told my wife we we decided like okay once we, you know, once we are able to you know, well, the goals were okay we got to get retirement we got to do you know we had all these goals, and um, the year that I was gonna be in and out, we decided we're just gonna be done after that, and so, you know, tell me, tell after us that what? year. What being in and out is. What's so that? it's kind of like, you know, teams are calling you during right. workouts, right? So They're you didn't have to sign you. Yeah. And so, and I was, I transitioned to tight end. Um, I mean, I was pretty beat up, you know, honestly, too. And so, Some injuries. Yeah. I got, I got hurt really bad in my rookie year, um, that first year, about putting me on IR. And so, um, you know, I'd accomplished a, a lot in the NFL with the cards I was dealt. And I just, I, you know, for me, football is just, you know, you do everything you can, right. To squeeze out every ounce that you can get. Cause it's such a short time, you know? And so, but I also knew I didn't want to waste time. You know, I didn't want to be a guy that just kept trying over and over, you know, and holding on to that. And, and I just wanted to move on. I just found a lot of purpose in what I was doing off the field. And we decided, yeah, I think we're, just gonna hang it up what were you doing off the field i was i was you know i've always been driven because i'm second generation in the nfl to help athletes with a lot of the things that they don't know about in the business and investing space so i mean eric mika has that kind of as a goal too right i mean not that i think he's kind of partially involved in the investment side and some private equity but yeah yeah but his podcast what is it um now for later. Now for later is yeah. all about helping people prepare for that. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's one thing that I that I've learned from a lot of the NBA players is you know in, in the NBA because I go to a lot of these different events you know with NBA, NFL, MLB you know athletes, and a lot of business people you know a lot of executives, a lot of CEOs, a lot of investment people, and you see the NBA guys are a step ahead for sure. Really? Yeah. You're talking about the players and their agents? Uh, no, just players as investors and doing really? business off the field. Because now no, it's- I saw that in my era, Danny Ainge was one of the professionals. And it was interesting how he seemed to be kind of head and shoulders above other pros that I knew of at that era. Yeah. Just in his abilities and his confidence. So why were the NBA guys ahead of everyone else? No, I felt like, I, or just watching it, I felt like they have a different, like to them, what's cool is to be an early investor into a business that- Kind of newer Newer company startups. that, yeah, startups. And also just to be, you know, have, they have a large portfolio of companies. Like your portfolio becomes the new flex in these professional sports- Interesting. Arena, right? And so the NFL, I would say for sure is catching, catching up. There's just more examples in the NBA you know, that I've done a lot of business like Shaq, like, I mean, you have Kobe, Michael Jordan, you have, and, and, that, and so a lot of players that are attracted to that. And then in the NFL, I mean, part of it, I bet is because, you know, not all our contracts are guaranteed and things, but uh, I think, you know, we have great example, like some of the great examples, you have like Steve Young uh, with what he did. And then you have, um, you know, we just don't, we just don't talk about it. I feel like as much as, the NBA guys, maybe it's because there's less people on the NBA team, or I, I don't know exactly, but it's 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 starting to change. A lot more NFL guys cool. are starting to so get important. into the investment space, but then also give back to the NFL. Good, and the pe- guys are in the locker room because you can, because you can, you know, while you're playing, you know, in the off seasons, it's okay to go take a lunch and learn something new about real estate, right? Sure. Or learn something new about, you know, startups or new technology or you know just be around good people i think that's what's starting to happen in the nfl in my career i was a portfolio manager awesome. at merrill lynch and then at morgan stanley oh, and wow. i loved it it was so fun i did have a few professional athletes but not many yeah um but one of the things especially when you talk about startups it would be so interesting because for a while i and my family lived down in uh Well, it it was a gas-rich, I was going to say an oil-rich part of New Mexico. The San Juan Basin has a whole bunch of natural gas, one of the Uh largest natural gas concentrations in the country. Wow. A clean energy relatively to most fuels. So anyway, um, 
when when you knew those people in the oil and gas industry, you know, when they drill a well, that well, you know, where they drill costs a lot of money. Yes. And there may or may not be anything that comes out of that. Yeah. You know, so I'm spending a lot of money yeah. to do that. So the critical thing for them was a word that you used, portfolio. Yeah. No, that infers that you're going to have multiple wells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got you know? diverse files. You're going to you do trouble. because I love uh, two of my sons uh, have startups. I'm so proud of these guys. You know, mm -hmm. way to go. Yeah. But when you're in a startup, I mean, there's a higher degree of failure potential. Mm -hmm. But my heavens, if for example, my friends down in New Mexico, if they drilled ten wells and only one of them was what they're looking for. That one paid for everything and a lot more. Yes. And that's what I see with startups. Yes. So, I mean, I can see, you know, if you if you build a portfolio of startups, cool. Yeah. More, more power to you. Yeah. If you, and so that's why I feel like like the safer bet, because, you know, for athletes, it's like, OK, well, how do we how do we do this? You know, and it's like, yeah, you want to be in, you know, in funds that are across multiple you know, multiple investments to have multiple assets in it, sure. to have multiple. And, and honestly, a big part of, you know, what I do is helping a lot of them, you know, a lot of the athletes uh, just get some more education around the space. Good for you. Know, you. They, it's like, why would I go invest do in something? Do you do some I don't of that know. training or teaching? Yeah, I do a lot of, I do a lot of, uh, you know, real estate but teaching. you have to get your energy level up. You're, you're a very low energy guy, <laughs> no, right? I know, very low <laughs> energy, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I would love to sit in a room and learn from you. That yeah. would be so cool. I just try to make it engaging and make it something interesting to them and and help them see the bigger picture of Yes. Because it's just such a short window that they have and this is this money that's coming in, it's I mean, since you were little as an athlete, it's like blood, sweat and tears, like and like back to the startup, like like this is this was your exit as an athlete. Like this is it. Like and and so you know, you want to make sure that it's just taken care of and cherished and, and that you're just getting the right education and, and you're being smart about it. Cause it should, it should, you know, the hope is that it lasts you as a, a lasted player, whoever it is a long time and their family. And, you know, so it's more of a, you're, it's funny cause you have a short window to play sports, but you're making, you know, 50 plus years, 70 plus year decisions Worth of, yes, in decisions. that, in that moment. So it's kind of interesting how, you know, you, as, and you're, you're, I mean, a lot of guys are in their twenties. Well, that, that's the beauty of it because yeah. the, the law of compound interest. It's exactly. Yeah. Good old Einstein and his, you know, the great, what would he say? The eighth wonder of the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, is compound interest. And when you, uh, when you start at 20 relative to starting at 35, you have to invest like three times more Yes. at at age 35 than you do when you're at 20. Why? Because compound interest. Out. So see, that's, oh, that's one thing I wish I would have done earlier. Start getting it, into. It's you know. right. And so you teaching that to these guys who are in their early twenties, I mean, you're, you're doing God's work. Oh, I'm shy. Yeah, no, really. <laughs> I'm when, when you teach those good principles, that's a good thing. Yeah. No, I, I love it. Honestly, it makes a what big difference. What company do you work for? So I'm with Harris Investment Group. Okay. Um, but what's their, do they have a specialty? Or? Yeah, the focus, yeah, the focus is on multifamily. Mm -hmm. So 100, 300 unit and then um, uh, gas stations. So truck stops. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's And how many, on. you know, if you're talking about truck stops, how many locations would a, would an average investment have of? Uh, it depends. We kind of run like two strategies where the beginning of the year, it's about, um, you know, we go, we do direct syndications. So we do oh. one offs. But okay. then the second half of the year, we do a uh, fund. We have a fund. And so right. usually we have eight so to you 12 don't have different a assets. Brand. You're not looking for specific brands. No, yeah, we're buying pretty much, yeah, kind of beat up, you know, non, non recognizable brands. Fix and us. then we go in and we, you know, you know, turn them into something recognizable. So right. like a TA station or, you know, Very something like good. a loves or that's right. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what we, that's that. kind of what we do. And it's been, I love that. it's been fun just cause you know, it's funny cause you know, it's, it's kind of not flashy or, but it, it does, you know, it performs well. So. Have you ever, you've, of course you have, but I'll tease, you know, have you heard of Warren Buffett? Yes. 
Of course. Or five. And I mean, he made his legend on on no name things that he, you know, at at least at the beginning. Yeah. Nobody knew who Berkshire Hathaway was. Yeah. And yet he bought this and and made it obviously into one of the biggest investments. So. Yeah. So that's a good thing. When you get into the sexy stuff, they say, <laughs> you know, that everyone else is excited about, then you're paying top dollar for it. But we. Yeah. Sometimes when you get into something that's a beaten up asset in a good location, yeah, then you can turn it around. Yeah, and, and you have a lot more control. You got more, yeah, and with your private equity, you can turn it around, upgrade it, and then you and your investors do well when you sell it at, yeah. you know, ten times. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> well, no, and that's kind of how over time. That's that's how this world has worked yeah it's crazy and, and but you know what's funny with the athletes it's like a lot of the athletes background like their backgrounds you know you don't grow up in that space you don't grow up in it no one's talking at family dinner about, <laughs> about investing Tom compound interest. interest yeah i didn't know about <laughs> investing or anything right like growing up and so you no know, to find the right it's all about finding the right people that you know are willing to take the time to teach yeah. if they're willing to do that then I, I feel like that's one of the big check marks you know if they're not willing to teach you uh, it's like, okay, I don't know if I should be over here. Because the investment world has so many black holes, you know, as so as, many. how do you understand all the acronyms, for example? Yeah, there's so many, yeah. yeah. How do you teach it in a way so that they understand can be grasped? It. Yes, and that's all that matters, honestly. Is, that's right. Yeah, so I love it. I love helping athletes because I know I'm helping, you know, generations, and uh, it's very fulfilling work. If we had Andy Reid on here, and it was fun. I, did you hear about the Harrison Butker talk that he gave at a Benedictine, Benedictine College? And it actually made news because he was talking about traditional family values. And of course, at a, even though it was a Catholic school, mm -hmm. there were people that took offense, you know, gender stuff and this other. And, um, and so even the NFL got, got kind of frustrated that, you know, and they, they kind of said, well, he's speaking for himself and not for us. Mm -hmm. So Andy Reid, who was a teammate of mine, uh -huh. you know, when I'm talking to him, I, I said, well, Andy Reid, Andy, you really handled that well. You know, the way, the way he and his locker room and the teammates handled this. Because the NFL said, oh, we're, we, don't, we don't say anything about that. That's, you know, and Andy, Andy stood up, the press, and I've said this before, so it might my audience is probably going to get bored of this story, but I still love the fact that uh, the the press was kind of tr trying to push Andy. Andy, what are you going to do? You're going to discipline him? You know, he said these things that were offensive to some people. <clears throat> and Andy said, "Well, you know what? Almost every day, you guys, the journalists, say things that I don't like, but we're still here together." <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "It's interesting that Harrison Butker." is a very sincere Christian man who, and he's so dependable, everyone on the team, and they all come from different backgrounds. And you'd be a good witness to this because I'm, I'm looking at it saying, you know, guys that have played at all these colleges from Florida to New England to California to Oregon and everywhere in between and Detroit and Michigan and whatever else, you know, and all different cultures and races, when you put that locker room together, you got a lot of different guys. Yeah. Who have a lot of different beliefs, right? Yeah, very true. And so how so I asked Andy, I mean, how, how do you keep that group unified? Because I was so impressed with how he and his locker room backed up this guy who had said some things that were offensive. And, uh -huh. and he says, Well, we all know him. We love him. We respect him. He may not be the best speaker in the world. Yeah, that's what Andy said. But um, but we all have his back, and it's yeah. kind of how our country is, that we can, you know, you have those beliefs, I have mine, you have your, yeah, and we keep going, you know? Yeah. We're not going to cancel him for that, yeah. like Andy said. Man. I mean, so I said, Andy Reid for president. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, that's why football is so special, honestly, in sports, you know, but especially football, because there's, there's a lot of guys on a team, and you all come together, all from different backgrounds, all from different, they were raised certain ways. Everyone, everyone's been, you know, raised differently with different ideas, different religions, different, and you come together just for a united cause. 
Yeah. And everyone is it's in a all difficult it. cause. It's not easy. It's not easy. You're gonna and, and you go through a lot of adversity, right? You're gonna I mean, lose. You're gonna people gonna are gonna get, get hurt. Down. You're gonna get a black eye. People are gonna it'd be in and out of the locker room, right? Like, but everyone is willing and they want they want everyone to win. And, and that's why that's why that's why you know, when you're a lot of players and I feel the same, I'd always hear players say, Oh man, I really miss I just, I just miss the guy. That's why I miss the most about really? about playing. That's cool. And and it's true. Like and I, I feel the same way. Like you just miss being with the guys and and that support and that camaraderie and that and you know, just it's it's just that, you know, being being one in purpose where, okay, the goal is to win a Super Bowl. Okay, we're all willing to, when we come through these doors, like, and we go to that field, like, we're going to do everything we can. We're going to work as hard as we can. We're going to do every, you know, and it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you believe, or but what does matter is, you know, we, we want to win. I as well. Yeah, I love that too. So I loved, yeah, Andy's awesome. No, I mean, yeah, and and uh, in my opinion, you know, he's more like Lavelle Edwards than, yeah, yeah, I get that vibe. Yeah, yeah I get that vibe. Did too. your father yeah. Steve play for Lavelle? He did. Okay, he did play for. I loves Lavelle. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Patty. Yeah, and Patty's great. Yeah. Oh my heavens. Yeah, he was in the same neighborhood that my mom grew up in. Really? Yeah, Lavelle. All right. So, so your mother is the mayor of Provo. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. He is. Um, your father has been a coach. What's he doing now? Yeah. Uh, he's he's no longer coach. He's He's in the oil and gas uh, industry, really? yeah. So he's doing that, and and he's the f- official unofficial bodyguard of the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goes with there to all the different events and different things going on around the city. I wouldn't mess with him. Yeah, he's on the move. I doubt you would either. I, no, I don't want to mess with him. He's got. I know he's got. You know, he's still got some fast twitch in him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you had a lot of that fast twitch too, and I think Corbin had some of it. Yeah, yeah, Corbett. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's so tall, too. He's taller than me. Yeah, where did he come up with all that height? It is so crazy, his story. He was late bloomer. Really? Very late. Very, very late. He was, um, so we were, when I was a, a senior, he was a junior, and he's probably like 6'3". You're talking about high school. In high school. He was 6'3". As a junior. So you're 6'7 now, so he has to be at least 6'10". Yeah, he's 6'10". Yeah. After. <clears throat> He grew like two inches. He was like six six as a senior. All right, a senior in high school. Do you think he's seventeen or eighteen years old back then? Yeah, and he's like six and he, six. He went from six three to six ten. Yeah. After went on a church school. mission, two years. Went to Korea. Came home. He comes walking off. He was walking out of the airport, and I'm looking at him like, what the oh heck? my goodness! <laughs> but then he also came home with like a 38, 40 inch vert. Yeah, vertical jump, seven foot. Two, three Weren't wingspan. Were they working in their mission or just working out? I don't know, he's over there training. Yeah, it's not that the kimchi. Yeah, the kimchi off the mount. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, he had if he had that much of a vertical jump. Yeah. I mean, no wonder he was playing even more basketball than his brother Bronson. Yeah. Right? No. Yeah, because he didn't do a lot of the basketball stuff growing <clears throat> up. I was more me. I did a lot of the AAU. And I remember you at in high school even. Yeah. Reading about you. I did a lot of basketball and Corbin. Didn't do as much, just late, just a late bloomer, and so it was fun to see him come home. And I took him to pick up over there, uh, down there at the uh, Smith Field House, and he played. And you know, my coach that coached me the year before, right, or a couple years before. You talking about basketball? Basketball, basketball. basketball yeah. It was Coach Pope, and Pope's like, "Hey, who's that?" I'm like, "That's my brother." And he's like, <laughs> "Did he play basketball?" And I'm like, "Yeah, he did a little bit." And he's coming from his mission, and he's like, "Oh, okay." And he's over here dunking on all the guys, and. He's like, what? I've never heard of this guy. So then, yeah, they ended up having him come on, and he ended up not playing football for two years and just I did basketball. That. And then did both. Because I did both my freshman year, and then he did both, yeah, his technically his junior year. But because his clock started on the basketball season, he got to play that extra year of football. Oh. Yeah. So that's so it's really interesting how it, all, how it all panned out. And then we ended up playing on the Jets together, and he moved to O-line. And – yeah. So at 6'10", did he put on enough weight to become an offensive tackle? He got up to around 360. No way. Yeah. I can't uh, imagine him that. Yeah. Beat, but at 6'10", 360 still looks really thin. I yeah. Mean, yeah, he still know? leaned up. Yeah. So then he ended up playing offensive line. And it's funny because my dad always 
would say, you know, Corbin, you should just play O-line, you know, since he was younger. And sure enough, he ended up going. Well, as a defensive guy, is that kind of a cut? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Or it goes no. defensive line, tight end, O line. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. You're gonna be our guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. He, but he knew like, but his wingspan is just that's what makes him rare. His yeah. his length is so he has he has the longest arms like in the NFL. So, like offensive line coaches like drool over that. Loved him. Yeah. So. So what's he doing now? Uh, so he's here now in uh, Utah, in uh, a Provo Orm area, and he's actually become a bodybuilder. Really. He's doing a show. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, it's crazy. He had this, he did this crazy cut, went down to 230. Then he, then he bulked up to like 280. And now he's probably 260 and probably single digit. Yeah. Body fat. Body fat. Wow. Yeah. He's looking good. Yeah. I bet he is. So I don't know. He tried to get me to go do it with him. I'm like, oh, I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> I got kids. I can't go to the gym that long. You know, he's in there for got a few hours. Family responsibility. Yeah. 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 I'm the oldest <laughs> brother. You know, I'm over here saying, I'll just, you know, work out at my home gym in the morning for the kids wake up. <laughs> yeah. Bronson Kafusi, what, what good stories. I can't imagine what growing up in your home was like. <laughs> it was so fun. It had to be fun. It was very competitive. Um, but it's just, you know, it's kind of funny because my dad, this is kind of funny about BYU in Utah. We were, I mean, growing up, I was the biggest Utah fan because we were kids. Really? Why? Yeah. Because my dad, my dad coached at Utah. That's right. And we didn't know he played because he never had any of his football stuff out. And so we had no idea. And so <laughs> we thought he just coached at Utah. So we were big Utah fans growing up. Then when we came to BYU. What what coach was he with? Was he with Ron McBride? Ron McBride. Whoa. Coach Matt. Yeah. I didn't know that. So it's funny because when he got hired at Utah, <clears throat> Coat or his second brother Rich played at BYU. Then the next four brothers all went to Utah. Okay, and so then, this is when the Kafusi family <laughs> kind of switched brands. Yeah, and as a BYU fan from out of state, I'm saying, what's going on? Yeah, what are we done. Yeah, went from Stephen Rich playing at BYU to my dad coaching at Utah. And it's funny because like Lavelle even said, like he had like, man, if you could name like your regrets, what or like your top five or something. And I think like number three was like. I should have brought Steve Kafusi to BYU. It's kind of funny. Like I as remember a coach. as a coach, yeah, because he when he went to Utah, he went over to Hawaii. Him and Kyle, and oh, they recruited, recruited like eight, eight yeah. of the top ten players. That's right. That and year that used to be where BYU was really strong. Yeah. So there's a shift that happened in the '90s. Ah. So. And then yeah, and so then then my dad left. Do you think your dad? What? All right. So what? What are your dad's? You know, is he still kind of more of a Utah fan today? Oh no, he's always been a BYU guy. Okay, I think, but he, but he loves, but he still loves and appreciates Utah for giving him the opportunity to oh, coach. Sure. Cause, absolutely. You know, and well, and Kyle and all the friend. siblings too. Yeah, and Kyle, right. and you know, it's and then like Kalani was, I'm pretty sure it was my dad's GA at Utah at one point, and then you know when he's done playing, and so then my dad left, came down to BYU, and even when we came down to BYU, you know. I mean, Urban Meyer got hired. Right. And Urban calls my dad up and says, come on back. Come on back. Later the day of, that, the day we drove down to Frollo. And then, and people are always like, man, you could have been at Utah. Every, all of us. And I was like, yeah. And we've had since I played. And hey, Utah's had a good tradition with linemen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so it's kind of funny, like, since I played, like, me being one of the oldest cousins, I have three older boy cousins. The three other boy cousins, one was at Michigan State, Ball State, Utah, and then one ended up going to Utah. So I played against my first cousins, two of them, when they're at Utah. But then after me, there's a ton. There's a lot. Right. There's a lot because there's six boys in my dad's family, six boys. But, you know, then all of a sudden some went to BYU, some went to Utah. So, But more, I'd say, I would say it's heavier BYU. Really? Since my dad left and went to BYU. So it's kind of funny. Keep that going. I know, right? All right. I, I, I know. I got a little boy. I'm like, hey, don't let, don't let, don't let Uncle Devin over here convince you. <laughs> <laughs> so our family reunion is a little bit like that with some fun. Oh, yeah. Everyone's teasing each other. Everyone, because everyone knows, like, hey, I know he likes BYU more. I know he likes Utah more. Like, but everyone teases about it. Sure. You know, yeah, too. Yeah. And it, it, it's fun. It's, it's actually pretty. Pretty hilarious, just because the family has just grown so much. I, I bet it's huge. Like family reunions fill up a whole gym, and literally, it's you know. But you look around the room, and you know, there's over 20, 20 maybe over thirty, you know, people in that room that all played at BYU, Utah, 
played a sport. Now, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, think that's about crazy. it. Uh, yeah. The Kafusi family. It's a lot. The genes run strong in the state of Utah. Yeah. And at BYU and the University of Utah significantly. Yeah. Mm. Well, and we're all blessed for that. Oh. We're, we're blessed for it. Just being able to play the game, you know, and get to go to school. Bro, listen, as we finish up here, what, what are some of your thoughts? Having played at BYU, played at the in the NFL, growing up in a family where your mom's in the political side, your dad's been a coach. <laughs> What what are your feelings you'd like to share with our audience? They're mostly BYU fans, but they're all over. Yeah, man, I don't know. I, you know, I think about it. Like I, you know, there's so many different things that uh, you know people people love, people do, and and I just think it's in, just important to you know appreciate the unity that comes from the game of football and just sports in general. Like even the Olympics going on right now. Like I, yeah, I, I love it. Honestly, I love that. That's my favorite thing about sports is you know how people come together, how people um, you know grow and uh, you know you you come into sports. And I love telling this to like parents, their kids don't play sports or they're thinking about it. It's like you come into sports and and you leave with lessons, just an abundant amount of lessons that set you up for life. <laughs> they are so applicable to life. So right? applicable. I mean, yeah. in football, I mean, last play, you got knocked down. I saw you got knocked down. Yeah. That guy got you, blindsided you. You got, yeah, I got, I got the destroyed. next play. Yeah, I don't know. That was me. Um, <laughs> but the next play, you get to get back up yeah. and do it again. And do it again. That's life. That's life. That's life. And and too many of us, maybe our kids or whatever, um, think that it's just going to be handed to you. Yeah. And it's not. I mean, life comes at you pretty hard sometimes. Yeah. You're going to fall down, and it's going to get tough, and it's going to be hard for you to even want to get up. And But in sports, you know, and and even with, like, with the season around the corner, uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement, and, and you know, especially with BYU second year in the Big 12. It's, That's right. You know, it's like it, BYU's going to face a lot of adversity. They but are. how can they handle it? They're, how can we're they play back? those guys from up north again? Yeah, yeah we're going to be going head to head, right? The rivalry games, you know, it's, it's back, and it's. I mean, and that's why I love. That's why I love football season. I love all. I mean, I love just watching sports in general. So I like to see how people bounce back. I like to see how teams bounce back. What you know? How are they handling this adversity? Oh man, five starters are out. What are we going to do? Yeah. Okay, we have to fill it up with the backups. Okay. Well, how well have we trained our backups? How well, you know, and you get to watch and you get to see this happen. And, and it's it's live every week. Everyone gets to see it. So, you know, what gives me hope and joy is, uh, you know, I'm sure there were some melancholy moments when you realized my football career is over. Yeah. You know, there were some. Yeah. It's all. But life goes on. And look at what on. you're doing. I mean, yeah. that's. And so, again, just like football, there's another play. There's another season. Yeah. There's another game. There's always going to be another season. Another season. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so have that positive, happy attitude like Aaron Rodgers says <laughs> of you. Because then we make the world a better place. Yeah. No, it's true. So it looks to me like you and your family are making a, the world a better place. Oh, man. Always. We're always trying. We're Keep always trying. Up. Keep it up. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Good thank to you. have you here, Bronson. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right. All right.